Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you looping in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here, and I want to loop certain sections. And the easiest way to do that is to go down here to this button, which Reaper calls repeat and turn it on. Then we can create a time selection as the section to loop. We can go up here into the ruler area and create a time selection that's going to loop. Or we can go in between the blank space areas of each track and create it there. And that's going to loop our project, which is really helpful for hearing the same section over and over again during playback. Now to clear it, we could just hit the escape key and that clears that time selection and the loop section because both sections are tied to each other. But if we want to separate them, we could do that as well. Go up here to the options menu and deselect loop points linked to time selection. This is on by default, but if we turn it off, we can create a time selection by dragging in the empty area of our tracks like this and create a loop section by dragging the ruler like this. Now this section is going to loop, but our time selection is over here or over here. This way we can still perform some editing while we're looping our playback. Let's say we want to cut part of our bass track. We could do that while we're looping another section. As our time selection isn't going to change our loop points. But with this turned on, it will. Now our loop points and our time selection are the same. Notice it jumps as we create a new loop point. If you don't want that behavior, we could change that in the preferences. Go to options. Go to Preferences and scroll down to Seeking, and we could turn off Seek on Loop Point Change. Again, this is on by default, but if we turn it off and we create loops during playback, it doesn't reseek and play back to those points. We first have to stop and play it again. But again, by default, this is on. So it's going to reseek every time we create new loop points. Now we could also choose our loop points using keyboard shortcuts. If we use these keys right here, the open brace and close brace keys while holding down shift, it's going to create the start and end of our loop. So we can click right here, shift, open brace, then click over here, shift, close brace to create a loop on that section. And we could extend it or shorten it with those keys. Close brace, open brace to change these on the fly. Now we could also use the less than or greater than keys. Again, holding down the shift key. And that's going to move our loop points based on the size they are. Shift greater than to move it to the right or less than 
to move it to the left. And again, it's based on the size of a loop. So if it's two bars, it moves two bars over. in either direction. Now we could also create loops based on our item size. So if I hold down shift and double click this item, it creates a loop based on the size of that item. Do it over here, here, down here. And our loop size is based on the size of the item. And we could also create them based on markers. Let's create a marker right here Type M, another one over here and here. Now to create loop points based on two different markers, we can either double click in the ruler up here or double click up here. And that changes the loop points based on the markers before and after it. And we can do a similar thing with regions. Let's select from bar four to six, type Shift R, which creates a region up here. Let's do another one over here. And now we can double click this region and it creates loop points based on the size of the region. For this one, or this one, or any regions in our project. But one of the biggest uses for looping is to loop recording. Let's open up a different project. And in this one, I have a synth ready to record. Let's create some loop points between bar three and five. And now with looping or repeat turned on, if we're going to record, we could loop record, which is going to record the same section over and over again until we stop. It's going to create takes, which we can choose later which performance is the best. So let's give it a shot. Let's say we prefer the last one. We can hear it back by clicking it. Then we could choose that one by right clicking it, go to take, and choose crop to active take. And that deletes the other one, just leaving us with the best take in our performance. And we did that by using loop record, which is another great use for looping in Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's looping in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>